I love black men. I love their power, their swag, their attitude, their genius, their brilliance, their way of, of thinking through things, their perspective, their wisdom. And somehow or another, I find that my feelings get hurt when they do things that feel, and the operative word here is feel, as if they're not standing with me. Right now I'm dealing with reproductive rights, a woman's right to choose whether to terminate a pregnancy or to keep the pregnancy. And it, this is a you know hot topic. Texas has done what Texas does. And <laughs> And, you know, really set a precedent in terms of um, making it really hard for women in Texas to to terminate pregnancy by changing the, the, the time dates and just d things that make it hard for women to take care of ourselves, right? And this is for women of all races. I'm not just talking about black women. I'm talking about women. And, and, and unwanted pregnancies, sexual assault, economic um, disparities, all of that comes into play. When it, when it has to do with having a kid. Okay. And so I'm very, I'm very pro, much pro-choice. And what I've been noticing on my pages, on my, on my, on my platforms, um, is a number of black men who actually think that a woman should not have the choice that she is murdering one of God's creations and that she, that all kinds of stuff. Okay. And so, this is what I'm dealing with. And this is a rhetorical question, all right? Is how is it that when it's time for us to march for social justice and black women march for what we believe in, okay? But when it comes to our, our rights with our bodies, black men go silent. How do I deal with that? How do we deal with that? How, how is it that you know, when it comes to black power, it's great when it's social, but not when it's concerning the black female body. Hello, this is Dr. Venus, your hot mess millionaire. And today we're talking about reproductive rights. Um, and now before I go all the way in, please make sure you, ooh, that you um, download the Hot Mess Millionaire podcast. And that if you wanna be with me um, monthly to have some girlfriend time with my new app, the girl app, please go to www.thegirlapp.com forward slash presale. So that's happening. And also, if you just want to be kept in a loop, there's a there's an app interest link here in the notes as well. I've included a series of resources, and this, this, is, pretty, this is pretty thick. Um, and I even included one resource from an um, extremist article by a black man articulating about how can Black Lives Matter when a black fetus doesn't. Now, I don't agree with this, but I wanna show you that there are black men who really are in alignment with the doctrine and, and the discipline of, of white patriarchy, right? So I'm not making it up, okay? And I'm not saying it's all black men. I have some amazing truth tellers. I have some amazing black men who walk with me in support. So please do not, I'm not saying it for all black men, but what I am saying is this is an important topic. It's just as important as reparations as far as I'm concerned. If we're talking about black women's bodies and you don't stand with us about it, your silence is complicit. You know, it's like, it's the same thing if we're talking about race. If we're saying, okay, we're in solidarity about race, how come we can't be in solidarity about reproductive rights in terms of the right to choose? And I'm, so I wanna to talk to you about it a little bit today. I'm not going to talk long because I know this is not a popular conversation. You know, I don't expect a lot of people to tune in or listen. But if you're being fed, if this is something that's important to you, I invite you to share it. Sharing is an act of love. No one is talking about black men and reproductive rights. Not anybody that I know about. So it's something that's important that I think that we as a community need to address um, because it's something that matters. And, you know, it may not matter right now to you, but what happens if your niece comes up to you and say, I'm pregnant? Or your baby sister says, I don't know what to do. Or God forbid, you know, someone, you get assaulted and then there's an unwanted pregnancy. Or what if you find out that you're pregnant and, the, and the, having a baby is going to endanger you and the baby's lives? 
Those are conversations that we need to talk about. That's not the same as marching. I'm like, look, how do you stay alive if the government is pulling all the funding for any kind of choice around reproductive rights? That's a real word. And we, we wanna talk about the politics of police, but what about the politics of the black female body? And where are the black, where are all the pro-choice men? I'm like, there's plenty of pro-life men, white men, who have no problem saying how they feel about it. But if you're standing with me in terms of me having a choice, I stand with you when it comes time for you to vote. I stand with you when it comes time to speak up about the police. I stand with you when we talk about, about wage disparity. I, I stand with you, bro. I mean, bro, I'm here. But when it comes to my body and the choice to do what I want to with my body, you're saying, no, nah, you, you, you got that. And I'm like, well, why is it that it's okay to stand with you about things that impact you, but you won't stand with me as a woman? with things that impact my, my ability to conceive life or to give life or to choose to not give life because it's my choice. And so I'm gonna have a conversation about why would a black man not be pro-choice? Okay, why would that be? How could that be like, okay, given that he was born by a black woman, right? So there's a couple of things. And these are profound. Um, if you think about the female body, it is the only body in human history that has been turned into chattel slavery in order to produce a labor force unpaid for generations. Okay? So, black men had to witness that. In fact, in terms of breeding, the people who were breeding with black women were black men. Now, it was under duress. This is not a slam or a slap, but it does point to survival. And if you think about it, Black men have been pimped for their sexual exploit. They have been exploited sexually. Black men have. You know, one of the things we talk about is about men be, black men being dogs or always having to do sex. Well, they were trained that way when they were on a plantation. The whole notion of being a motherfucker is literally a term that was created in slavery when a black man or a man of African ancestry was forced to have sex with his mother to produce children. That is where that phrase comes from. So black men have been sexually exploited since they came to this country. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about black men being raped during slavery by white men in front of their families intentionally to shame them. We don't talk about that. So black men have a whole, a very, very, very complicated relationship to sexuality with regard to the historical ramifications of North American child slavery. We don't talk about it, but we should. In fact, we are now, okay? So when it comes to the ideal of protecting the black female body, on some level, I can imagine the, in, in the unspoken, in the reward for being sexually virile, it doesn't relate to them. If you think about socially, black, the female body is like you got yourself pregnant, as if she impregnated herself, any female. It doesn't account for that there had to be a willing or not willing or a forced in interaction with a male who actually released semen and she in, in her body. And yet the positioning is, is all on the woman. And so if you've been rewarded socially with accolades or respect for how many women you can bag or whatever, then your relationship to the female body is just as tarnished as the white man's has been. If the white body, if, 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 if plantation slavery was designed to turn the black female body into a factory, then black masculinity that's been skewed by white supremacy in terms of patriarchy has turned the black female body into a scoreboard. How many can you get? How many did you have? How many babies can you father? And that is, and, you, and do not forget this, they were rewarded socially for producing babies during slavery. That is an important thing to note, okay? And we do not talk about that. We don't talk about the historical wound of sexuality on black men. We don't. Well, we haven't, okay? And so, and, and another thing to talk about is that black men are sexually molested, sexually raped as well. Men across the board are, but there's no space to talk about it. Whether it's at home, being molested at home, whether it's in jail, being gang raped in jail, 
whether it's at fraternities, black men bodies get took too, but there's no outlet to articulate it. So it goes underground. So there's a level of numbness, I would say, or emotional detachment from black masculinity with regard to reproduction, period, in the story. We don't talk about it though. We don't talk about it. And because we don't talk about it, when it's time, when we start talking about pro-life and abortions and life and all that, there's no voice there because they haven't had a voice in that conversation. They've never had this, they've never had that conversation. They've never had to. And it's never been safe to. To be fair, it hasn't been safe for a black man to say that he's been sexually molested. That won't we that's that's considered weak. There's a penalty for that. There's a penalty for that. And I will say this, a number of people, I can't say all, because it's not the truth, but a number of people who have been sexually assaulted when they were young end up being with a, a gender that assaulted them. Okay, so that there is, there's different things to keep in mind when we start talking about reproductive rights, because semen and well, sperm and eggs, both come, they, they, both are, they both count in terms of reproduction. So we can't just talk about the egg and not talk about the sperm. Okay. And if we don't talk about the sperm, we're not talking about the person who's, who is coming from, which is the accountability of the man. There may be some men, I'm pretty confident there are some men who want to keep the babies. Could you imagine that if a man wants to keep a baby and a woman wants to terminate the pregnancy and they want to, where's their voice in that? Do they get to the say or not? And then there are some men who don't want to have, they don't want to be accountable for the pregnancy and they just go away. But they want, they want the recognition of that's my child, but they don't want the responsibility, right? So we're, it's a complicated, it's a complicated topic because it has a lot of pieces in, in play. We have the historical, we have the hurt, we have the financial, okay? Because some men who are not accountable for their seeds, for their children, end up getting child support and they feel like black women are using the court system against them when they in fact don't even want to acknowledge the child is there. So they have to do a paternal test and all this extra, but, but then they, they get mad at black women for having to go through the courts. And that creates a level of resentment between black men and black women because in their logic, based on what they shared with me, is that she should have worked it out with him instead of going to the white man or going to the court system. But she tried. And he wasn't willing and she had no choice but to. Now there's some women who do it out of spite and I'm not saying there's no, no judgment, no condemnation. But what I'm pointing to is when it comes to us uniting around black women having a choice, what I'm noticing is that there's a lot of historical thinking like, well, you're not supposed to kill a baby. Well, if the baby's killing you, why would you not? There, you can't just make a blanket statement like that. There are some, there are some complications that really warrant that or women are using um, abortion as birth control. Well, where are the men who are having the sex and how come we don't go to them and hold them to account? And that's a real question. And the reason why we don't is because historically in terms of North American child slavery, black female body, but also women's bodies is that women have been socially positioned as the homemaker, not as the breadwinner. And because of that stereotype, there's this unspoken a belief that women are responsible for the children, not the fathers. The fathers are responsible for funding. The women are responsible for feeding, right? But the problem with that is that women end up being positioned as if we're accountable for the whole birthing situation when it takes two to tango. And, and even in our current discourse across the board, we don't talk about it like an equal sharing. We talk about it like women getting abortions. Ooh. You don't hear talking about, well, where are the men who are standing for her choice or taking on having a baby or raising a baby without her? You see what I'm saying? And I'm saying in terms of black masculinity, because there's the breaking of black family and he hasn't been empowered to be there. There's a level of shame that comes with that, that we don't talk about. Clearly this is a not talk about day, right? Um, and there's also some real traditional values of, well, she's the woman, she's responsible for the birth control. Well, what if, what if the condom breaks? What if the pills don't work? It happens. And it's not, it's not that rare. It happens pretty regularly. Okay. But because of his pleasure and he does he wants to go bareback, then she's at jeopardy and he's like, oh, well, you're the woman. 
so you'll take care of it. Or what if he encourages to get the abortion? Because he doesn't want to be accountable, but he doesn't be the bad guy. You see what I'm saying? So all of these factors come into play when it comes time to march, vote, stand for reproductive rights. And what I'm noticing is this whole traditional come from, based on the comments that I'm getting from my followers, from my truth tellers, that um, women are being feminist because we want to have the right to choose. And I'm like, are you kidding me? But it so frustrates me that we're only useful to black men when they think it's valuable to them. They can't have a baby. So where you're at, I don't see not one, I don't see comments at all. What am I doing? I can't tell right now. I, I can see you're here, but I don't see any sharing, any comments, nothing. And I've been going for a minute. Okay. I don't know what's happening. I don't, are y'all are scared of this conversation? It's interesting. And it could be a bunch of men listening. So if they're listening, welcome. My point is women, we have a right to our choice. And I strongly believe that as the backbone of the black community in terms of our social justice with us marching and standing, that when it comes time for us to be supported by that which matters to us, I'm 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 calling BS on brothers who say they're 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 partners but they're quiet. You cannot support somebody just by being quiet. Your silence will not protect you. You see what I'm saying? Like this is like we say it to white people. We say it to allies all the time. Where's the activism on behalf of us? We, I mean, I hold my allies to account. To account. If you are with me then you need to use your platform to amplify something, okay? And yet when it comes to black men, we do not hold them to account for standing with us around the things that matter to us as women, as women. They don't have to worry about, they don't have to worry about getting pregnant. They don't have to worry about unsafe sex. They don't have to worry about, not the, in terms of pregnancy. My point is that we don't hold them to the same standard that we hold white people do to when they say they for us. I have a whole core of a black men who I know are on my side. And when it comes time to stand for reproductive rights, they are quiet. You don't have to leave me to sabotage me. You can just be quiet. You don't have to say something bad. Just say nothing at all. You know? <laughs> and then when Roe versus Wade gets reversed and we start having these jacked up home done abortions in, in the back alleys of black communities, we're going to be like, oh, what happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. We didn't stand together. There was no unity around reproductive rights. So you're going to have a bunch of black babies, baby, baby girls, who are going to be performing different kinds of abortions because they won't be legal. They won't be able to give the state the care that they need. And unless you can have black men stop having sex with black women or black girls, then you can't put it on her. And say, oh, well, she was irresponsible. She wore a short skirt or she asked for it, which, but ugh. Venus, come back. God, help me not curse. My point is, we're real quick to support each other around social justice. But what about reproductive justice? What about that? And I'm and the, like, when I call out my white allies about sending me private messages about what they feel, I'm like, that's not helpful. What is helpful is you taking a stand, taking a stand with me about that which matters. I don't agree with a lot of things that I stand for 100%, but I agree to people having the right to choose. I do. I don't agree. I mean, look, I have a lot of opinions about pretty much everything, but I will stand with you and I will fight with you for your right to choose it. Voltaire said, I do not agree with the words you are saying, but I will fight to the death for your right to say it. I'm with him. I am with Voltaire on this one all day, every day. Okay? So what I'm saying is if you really love me, if you're really for me, if you really love black women, oh, if you really love women and you're empowering our power, instead of, instead of trying to keep us in some traditional, unfulfillable expectation, then raise your voice, pull up, hook a sister up, stand with me. Don't leave me alone when it comes to my, my reproductive rights, but then hold me to account when it's time for me to talk about marching on Washington and saying, I don't got you. I have demonstrated as a black woman, I got you six ways to Sunday, bro. But I'm saying, this is my body. This is the body you put your body in to create a new life. As a black woman, this body, this womb is what made you have a life. 
And I'm saying you need to stand with me to protect that right to choose. Not everyone was going to say no. But some of us will, because not everybody wants to have their body stretched out or have, you know, the, the complications and the postpartum and the depression and all the things that come from giving life. And that needs to be her choice. It doesn't matter if I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people I love that I don't agree with. But I, my agreeance is not, it's not necessary for me to align and empower their choice. That's the difference. I'm not saying, look, how can I say this, God? I'm trying to see how I can say it soft. That's what the, I'm praying right now. This is me praying. I'm trying to say it so I don't curse out the world. I have a boyfriend. Okay. And he, he's an amazing man. Let me, let me prep. He's an amazing human being. Okay. He's amazing. He's amazing. Amazing. And he has some very, very, very traditional notions of masculinity. Okay. And it's subtle, but it's enough to make you want to slap him, just pimp slap him across the room. If we just want to be frank about it. Right now, I don't agree at all, at all with some of the positioning he has about what a woman should do, what a man should do. And now he's older than me. He, we're both mature people, right? Um, but he has very traditional roles. And even in his liberalism, he's still a traditionalist. It's a little annoying, okay? Oh, it's a lot annoying, quite frankly. But the thing that I'm aware of is this. I don't have to agree with him to align with him. I don't have to be of this. I mean, I can align. We're doing some things with our therapists and I'm aligning with what he's committed to for us. I don't agree with his ways. I don't agree. I, I really don't. I think he's, I think actually, I think he's a fucking caveman. If you know my opinion. That's what I think. I think he's a caveman. Okay. And the Anathar, I'm like, look, look, me, man, you woman. I mean, you can't be serious. Right. And that doesn't diminish. He's a great guy. He's a wonderful human being, but he still has some of the patriarchal, ideologies that come from white supremacy that he was born that was born in the belly of black masculinity that comes with the whole choice right but i can align even if i don't agree i can empower his i can empower what he's about without me saying okay i have to i have to i have to do it i have to believe what you believe i don't but i can empower his power you see what i'm saying and he can empower mine right and what i'm pointing to sis and what i'm pointing to bro is I know not everybody's going to be down with abortion or not. I understand that. I'm not expecting that. I don't want that. What I want is alignment. What I want is solidarity. What I want is when it's time to vote and really look at, okay, what's going to empower us as a people? What's going to empower us as a people is unity. And that's across the board. If you think about the, the if you think about the, um, the bus boycott in Montgomery, what empowered that was unity. And I'm, I'm confident they did not agree on every point. In fact, they probably fought the whole time. We just don't hear about that. Okay. But they were aligned for the betterment of them, of, of the community, of each other, of us all. And what I'm pointing to is if our men sit down around reproductive rights and we sit down around police reform, everybody loses. And it's hard to stand for something when the people you're standing for don't stand with you. It feels like betrayal. I want you to know I had this whole hurt heartbreak when I found out that 12% of black men voted for Trump. I'm like, God, why? I could not, I couldn't, my brain could not do it. Okay. And, and it took me a while to realize B, they have a right to vote for whomever they want to vote. Does it make sense? It, I really, it, I had to adjust, I had to grow into that one, y'all. But the, it, it, but it's, how can I say? I don't agree with that. <laughs> I do not agree, but I can align with those 12% of black men having the right to choose where they cast their vote. Does it make sense? So I'm just happy they voted. I'll take it. I don't agree with who they voted for and they voted. That matters more to me. If we have us voting, then we're dealing with the system the way it's designed and we have to meet America on America's terms if we want to win at this. So while I do not align with their choice, 
I, I don't agree with who they voted for, but I align with their commitment to voting. I'll take it. I will take it. I'll take, I'll take it for, I'll, uh, 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 how could you do this? Uh, 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 right? I'll take the hit, but I would much rather have them have a voice in the system that our, our people fought for and died for and went to jail for. I'll, I'm okay with that. If that's what it takes, then okay, God, I do not agree with that 12%. But I love that they're in the fucking count. That counts to me. That matters. Because we've had too many people historically die for us to have the right to have a voice. So while I don't agree <laughs> with, with, with everything that people do, I align with us having the choice and the voice. What I'm standing for is that we stand together in unity, even if it's not something that we all agree on. I don't think it's possible to agree on everything, but I do think it's possible to align, okay? And I do think that because of white supremacy, black masculinity has been skewed to view power as patriarchy. I do, I think they think having a woman, and I'm not, and for my brothers who are listening, know that I love you. So I, I know you can only be listening if you love me. So, okay, so please don't think I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about brothers who love us, okay? I'm talking about the ones who say bad things, who are awful, who turn us into the enemy and blame us instead of, instead of being accountable for their own woundedness, okay? What I just wanna make sure you understand is that we're strong when we're together. That's it. We're strong when we're together, okay? And I can't, I don't wanna do this life without you, black man. I don't. I think we'll lose. I don't think we can win without you. And so I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not mad. I just want you to be on my side. Okay, that's all I want. I just want you on my side. I just want you to hear me out and get an understanding and see why would I even care about reproductive rights? Why would you, why? why? Just hear my word, understand me, get a perspective. You know, and even if you, even if you don't agree with my choice, back me on it. Where I come from, there's a whole thing of culture, tree culture. I got your back. Shit's real. You know, I mean, there have been people who've had my back that were mad at me, but we, they they no, we got her. There have been people, there have been people that I've been really, really betrayed by, but I had their back. It didn't matter. It wasn't even like agreement. It's like, no, the threat was so much bigger. I had your back even if my feelings were hurt. You see what I'm saying? Because that's street culture. Loyalty is everything. Loyalty trumps love. It trumps love. And so I'm saying as we fight, I was just saying, as we stand for a world that works for everyone, I'm saying stand with me, even if you don't agree with my choice. Let me, empower me to have a choice. That's the only thing I'm saying, is the, the pro-choice is a choice. Don't take away my choice. And if you don't stand with me, you're taking away my choice. You're, you're, siding, with the, you're siding with the other people. And that is not, I'm not okay with that. We can't be solid with police reform, but not with reproductive rights. And it will show up, especially if you're in poor black communities and people of color communities or poor communities, when they start shutting down whew, healthcare spaces or clinics and you can't get, you can't get your vaccines for, for herpes or you, don't, you can't get condoms for AIDS and you can't do this healthcare. Because a lot of the stuff that happens with places like Planned Parenthood it's, it's, health, it's health related. They make it sound so bad. And, but it's, there's so much more to it. And I'm just saying, there's, I, you don't have to agree or even completely understand to stand with someone having a choice. And that's what, that's what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with the loss of choice legally. Road versus way, they're chipping away at it. Texas has already passed a law about no abortions across the state. Period. And so they don't care if you were raped, don't care if it's a health issue, don't care if it's incest, don't care what age. They're just, they're just doing what they do. They're doing Texas. They're doing everything Texas does. So I can't be mad at them. But the, but the Supreme Court can see it. And because they lean on the conservative side, they're passing these laws. And when they start to impact your families, it may not be you directly, but it could be your nieces, your nephews, it could be some cousins. Then you're going to be like, oh, well, what, what, what do you mean you're pregnant? Well, I couldn't. I didn't know. I didn't. I couldn't go to the clinic because the clinic got closed. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. That's the kind of stuff, and it, we don't realize it until it's taken away. And then it takes another four to eight years to get it back open again. That's what I'm dealing with. Okay. So I've said my piece. 
Okay. And I love you. I love you, bro. Please don't get mad at me for saying this. I'm not mad at you. I just need you on my side. Okay. <laughs> your voice counts. Your, your vote counts. You say it differently than we do as women. And I just need you to let to empower me to have my own choice and vote with me. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to go in the clinic if, unless I ask you to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> If I need you to be with me, then you need to be with me, okay? <laughs> I thought it was funny. All right, beloved. If you were fed by this word, this life giving word, this life affirming word, please pay it forward. Um, sharing is an act of love. It really is. No one in these internet streets are talking about what I'm talking about. And it's, it's a deep conversation, but it's a worthy one. And like I said earlier, I don't expect a lot of back and forth on this one because it's not popular. And I know that social media has lost its mind this, this week <laughs> you know, it's, and Mercury's, Mercury's in retrograde. I don't, I'm cool with that, but I do think that it's a worthy topic in concerning unity and black masculinity. Okay. And there's no shade, just love. And I just want you to be on my side. That's all. All right, beloveds, this is Dr. Venus, your hot mess millionaire. I love you, sis. You are God wrapped in flesh. You are the way, the truth, and the light. You are the, you are the alpha and the omega. You are God wrapped in flesh. Thank you for allowing me to love you. Thank you for allowing me to, to, to have a platform to speak. You know, thanks for hearing my word. And thank you for sharing it. Okay. And also for all my brothers, thank you for allowing me to talk about a topic that, that is closer. It's not, I normally talk about black women. This one mattered to me. Um, and prayerfully, you can hear the love behind it. You don't hear condemnation. I know it's not simple being a black man. I'm not claiming that at all. I'm not claiming that at all. And I need you to stand with me. I really do. When it comes time to vote, I need you to empower my choice. I don't care if you agree with me or not. I just need you to empower my choice. That's what I need from you. Okay. And I promise you, I will always have your back, but please have mine about this. Okay. And other women may not be able to say it like that, but I can say, I need you to have my back when it's time to start voting out people who are, who are pro-life and anti-pro-choice. Okay. Um, and for my allies, thank you for always supporting me and amplifying my voice. I love you for your loyalty to me. Okay. This is Dr. Venus, your hot mess millionaire. That's all I got for now. Please share this video and um, we'll share this bar cap and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye for now.